Hey guys, uh, welcome to yet another video. Today I'm just going to talk about a physics practical, uh, a simple tip on graph plotting. Okay, I call this the SPCAG method. Okay, if you can master this, I can tell you this is really going to help you in your practical. You're going to ace it. Okay, so SPCAG stands for, as you know, SPCA is Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. So you can remember this by SPCA and G, just remember group lah, okay? So SPCA G method on graph plotting, of course. Okay, does it stand for that? Nope. Okay, so let's just, without further ado, let's just dive straight into it. Okay, so the S in SPCA G method stands for scale. Okay, what do I mean by scale? Okay, in a graph paper, graph paper basically has got lighter lines and darker lines, right? Like uh, you can see over here, you can see the lighter lines and the darker lines. The darker lines are these dark lines here, and you can see the lighter lines. So the lighter lines form the smaller squares, whereas the darker lines forms the bigger square. Okay, so basically the dark lines, one big square has got about 10 times 10 small squares inside. So what it means is that darker lines form big squares, and the big squares have about 100 smaller squares okay so just get your orientation on that so for easy plotting okay we'll just use this rule the rule of one two and five okay so how do we remember one two five okay one two five just very simple remember using the singapore currency denomination okay in other words uh your singapore currency is in one dollar what's the next one after one dollar two dollars right after two dollars what do you have you have five dollars Okay, so you may ask me, so after $5 or after $5 is back to $10. Okay, so it's back to 1 again. So these are two magic numbers, three the magic numbers rather, 1, 2, and 5. Okay, why? So how do I use this? Okay, in short, okay, each big square, what you see here, just now introduce uh, each big square here, this will represent a scale of either these three numbers. So in the tenth or tens, of these three numbers okay in other words okay you just look at these three numbers one two five okay just move the decimal point either to the left or to the right so it can be 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.05 then 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.5 or 10 20 50 or 100 200 500 1000 2000 5000 so you can basically get okay in other words if you look at this 50 here okay, Okay, so this 50 thing here, you can see this basically it just means that each big square represents 50, right? 0, 50, 150, so on, right? How about this one? 0 0.1, I take one example over here. 0 0.1, you, see, you can see the distance between uh, the value of each big square is actually 0 0.1. Okay, how about this thing here? You've got 0, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, so each big square represents a difference of 2000 over here so 2000 so basically in other words you can have any of these numbers okay just move around in these uh, each of these three magic numbers one two five and move around the decimal okay so that will be your guide all right okay so what do i mean so when when do you, you might ask when do i actually use a wrong um wrong scale okay so let me just show you a negative demonstration okay don't do this okay this is wrong okay so wrong scale will be for example 0 25 50 it looks very normal right okay so but you can see eh, if I break it up this each one is 25 so 25 I move the decimal point is 2.5 no it doesn't go back to 1 2 or 5 this thing here same thing 3 6 9 12 you know I break it up you see it's 3 it's not doesn't belong to a magical number 1 2 5 also right Okay, so you might ask me why, why can't I use this? Okay, so why is this wrong? Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit. For example, if, let's say, I would use this scale of 0, 25, 50. Let's say, looking at between 50 and 75. If I ask you to plot 60, is it easy to find? Oh no, you know it's somewhere closer to 75, but you got to count, right? you got to count one square represents 15 divided by 10 squares that's 1.5 so 1.5 you gotta count from 50 to 60 how many 1.5s there are right so same thing to this 0 3 6 9 12 you may think it's very simple let's say 12 to 15 i ask you to find for me 14 where's 14 or oh, you got to divide 10 squares into 3 again wow 10 divided by 3 that's 
three and one third of the square. So you, you see, you get my point. Okay, basically, what I'm trying to say is don't use these scales because it's very difficult. It will cause you a lot of errors and it's not easy to find and to even plot your graph. Okay, which brings us to the next point. Next point will be plotting. So S, P. P is plotting, basically just to plot correctly with the correct scales. Um, using the correct scales, indicate points with an X. Okay, so how does an X look like? For example, these are all my X. So you can see this, my graph. All my red points are the points with an X. You can see here. Okay. Next one, C, SPC, we had a curve for best line or best fit or curve line or best fit. Okay, so over here, basically, there are just two criteria to do. Okay, zoom in. Zoom in. First thing, you got to shift your ruler so that some of distances above the line is equal to approximately equal to the sum of distances below the line. Okay, I'll show you what this means in a second. Okay. But the second criteria is just to shift the ruler so your distances are as small as possible. Okay, look at this. This solid line here is my best fit line. Okay, you can see here. Okay, best fit line. Okay, you can see if I draw this somewhere in the center. Okay, my points above. How many points are there above the line? Okay, I got one point, two point, three points above the line, right? How many points below the line? One point. Two point below the line. Okay, so let's this one only one point is on the line, right? Okay, so let's say if I look at the number of points above the line. Okay, can you see here? In the three points above the line have a total distance. Can you see of about? You can count around two squares, and you don't really need to be very accurate here. Okay, just use an approximation about two squares here, over here about one square from the line. And this one, this point here is about three squares above the line. Okay, so for all the points above the line, if I sum up, I got two plus one plus three equals to six squares. Okay, I've already shifted this line such that it is smack in the center, but this is basically how I select the position of this line, right? So the two points below the line, you've got to shift your ruler such that um, these two points are below right so below that means they are below and um the total number of squares over here you can see three squares and three squares so okay we are good to go we are also six squares below the best fit line so both of them are six squares below okay i'll just show you what this means in real life okay okay so let's say this is your ruler over here so you got your ruler you can actually move your ruler so that's why it's important to have a transparent ruler okay so you can see both sides above and below so the thing is you got to move your line such that you see if i move my line here is this best fit no because all my points are only on the right side if i move the line the other end you know roughly okay you can see oh no cannot again because all my lines all my points are now on the left side so you know it's got to be somewhere in the center but which part where do i stop so you're going to move it such that okay you can see this distances here this plus this plus this roughly is equal to this plus this okay so in other words basically what i just showed you over here this three plus one plus two must be roughly equal to 3 plus 3 squares over here so you know roughly this is not good this is good okay if i have two up even like let's say now you can see oh there's so many squares so many squares but this this is about three or four squares so about eight squares this is about one small square distance okay so about if one small square distance you know the line need to shift a little bit more to the right okay got it all right so that's basically how you draw best fit line Okay, of course, the other criteria, which I didn't mention earlier, is that you've got to shift your ruler such that the distances are as small as possible. Okay, what do I mean? Okay, now distances need to be as small as possible because just now, remember, we mentioned the first criteria, the distances on above and below the line roughly need to be the same, right? So if they are the same, I can also, if I don't have the second criteria, you can always say that, oh, this is also a best fit line. Can this be a best fit line? Of course not. You're roughly the trend, you know, is going up. But you can always, if I just have the one on distances, you can say this plus this plus this distance is roughly equals to this three distances also, right? 
ah but of course this is not the best bit line we all can see that right because that is not the trend the trend of your points is the line roughly has to go up in other words you got to draw your line such that you minimize the distance between uh, from the line to the point okay so you got to make sure it's as small as possible okay so that's basically what we are talking about here what's basically what i mean okay so now we come to the third to the fourth part okay exit this one very straightforward um exit always just indicate the variables with units in this format okay x slash y where x is the variable and y is the unit okay below are some examples for example if you have a symbol for l for length slash in centimeters or meters or millimeters whichever okay over here you have time you can time slash the unit it can be minutes or in this case in hours okay in this case this one is a force in newtons mass in kilograms or t can be temperature or it can be any sim other symbol but slash measure in degrees celsius okay got it so the last point will be your gradient so in gradient you gotta just find two nice points on the best fit line it needs to be on the best fit line that are as far as part as possible and indicate with a circle dot after that indicate with the coordinates near the dot in this brackets for example okay and these are my best fit line here okay in my in my um in in my graph here just indicate just find two points that are far apart indicate with a dot circle dot circle okay why is dot circle why don't i put x ah okay just to differentiate between your gradient point and your plotted point that's it okay so your gradient point must be on the line okay where's your plotted point actually you can have a plotted point your best bit line doesn't need to actually fall on to any point you can see over here just nice it basically just falls on one point sometimes it doesn't even fall on any point but of course if you can have more points of course that's good but uh, make sure your criteria you fulfill those criteria okay all right so um after you draw the two points as far apart you see i find two nice points right just now i mentioned just to find the uh, just to indicate the great the coordinate so this 120 1.4 over here 32 and 0 0.2 so after you do that draw the triangle this is called the gradient triangle the dotted line down uh, draw the right angle triangle and use the gradient formula basically you've learned this in maths one y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 okay and basically that's it okay so in summary just to share uh, your checklist every time you plot points you plot graphs you need to have spcag scale remember the three magic numbers one two five okay plots plot correctly make sure with an x curve or best fit line the two criteria equal distances top and bottom as well as minimum distance as small as possible right and uh Fourth one, the axis for header with the units or the symbol with units, and finally your gradient triangle. So have you selected two points far apart? And have you drawn the triangle indicated with the coordinates? So once you have done this, tick, 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 you are good to go. Alright, so that's it for uh, plotting of graphs, okay, in physics practical. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next.